Georgia Southern long snapper Ryan Langan. Uh, welcome him onto the show here on the State of Football. We we chatted behind the scenes, Ryan. Now we had to bring you out here to the masses and get you uh, to to our listening audience. So welcome in on the show. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you for having me um, today. Um, I'm doing great. It's sunny here in Orlando, just enjoying the weather. So, Yeah, rub it in, why don't you? It was snowing when I woke up this morning in New Jersey, but it's all good, my friend. Uh, I know you are you are preparing for the NFL draft, and, and we probably spoke about a week or 10 days ago. So let's start off there. Uh, you know, what, what, what's what been the goal at hand? What have you been doing this past week or two since the last time we chatted in terms of your preparation for the draft? Um, I've been really focusing on with um, my snapping. I've been focusing on, you know, just becoming that more accurate and consistent. Um, you know, those are huge things when going into um, the NFL. You know, you have to be, if you want to be the best, you have to be accurate and consistent at what you do. And, you know, in college, um, you don't block as much. So I'm now starting to learn, you know, the correct blocking technique um, for, you know, the pro style punt. So I've been really, you know, just kind of locking in on those details and um, really focusing on that and trying to get better overall my snapping. Um, and I've also been training at D1 here in Orlando and um, working on, you know, my bench, my, you know, my get off on my 40, just like little things that can help me, you know, more to, be, to become more draftable. So. Well, I don't know uh, wh- wh- where, what, air, you know, how are you improving the snapping? I think you had over 500 career attempts, zero bad snaps. So what exactly are we working on there? You know, I know the consistency is accurate. Are, are we just working on sharpening the, the technique to getting a quicker release or what exactly are you working on there? Um, I would say probably just really fine tuning it into where every time it's going to be, you know, right on the right hip, left hip, you know, right in the center of the body, you know, right at the belly button range. Um, really just fine tuning where every time I snap, it's going to be there. I'm also making sure, you know, um, my snap speed is consistently, you know, at a six, seven, seven, two range. Like you can't, you know, you don't want to slow it down or speed it up. You know, you want it just to be a smooth process. Um, but really I've been primarily focusing on the blocking, um, because, you know, just in pro style, you do have to block. Um, otherwise the punt's going to get blocked. So really focusing on the footwork and the techniques and how to pick up and read, you know, the, um, defenses coming at you. So. Georgia Southern long snapper, all American Ryan Langan here, 51 career starts. And, uh, Ryan, I really enjoyed your backstory when I had a chance to speak with you because, you grew up in such a small town in a little tiny community uh, a, a playing six-man football. <laughs> but, you know, for, for folks who are just tuning in and hearing about you for the first time, give them the insight. Give us that uh, background perspective, where you grew up, how you grew up, and how you landed at Georgia Southern. Um, so I'm from Cedar Rapids, Nebraska. Um, it's a town of about 300 people. I graduated, my senior class was, I graduated 19. I think there was um, a total of 60 kids through freshman, through um, senior. Um, I also, a lot of people think it's weird, but I went to the same school from pre-K to senior year, did not go anywhere else. It's just one big school. Um, I played six-man football. A lot of people also don't know what that is, um, but it's a huge thing in the Midwest. Um, so, um Played six man and um, grew up on a farm, you know, helped my dad farm a little bit. And then um, just from there, I remember, you know, like I told you earlier, a couple of days ago, I was, you know, playing some football and then my dad takes me to a Husker game. Um, and I remember sitting there and I was like, man, I was like, I would love to play at this level. But, you know, I just with six man, there's just you don't get that much attention, you know, because, you know, most college coaches are looking, you know, at guys who probably play 11, man, you know, not guys who play six, man. Um, but I was at the Husker game and I remember, you know, um, this kid running on the field, his number, I think was 54. And I was like, man, what does he play? You know? And I looked at my dad and, um, it said LS. I was like, LS. I was like, what is, you know, what's LS? So, you know, I look it up and I'm like, Oh, long snapper, you know, I do that. And so, you know, I start looking up, you know, more facts about it. And, um, trying to figure out, you know, how easy it is or if it's possible to get into, you know, a college, like a D1 program at long snapping. Well, then I come across um, Rubio long snapping. And um, so I reached out to him. He gave me a guy who was a former Nebraska um, snapper. And 
ever since then, I, you know, I went there and trained with him and just kind of got the routine of things and, um, you know, learned a lot about long snapping that I did not know before. Um, I think before, you know, I don't have a ball on me, but like you kind of supposed to hold the ball like this. I was holding the ball like this, you know, completely different. So, um, you know, it was a long journey because I knew in order to be um, to play D1, I was going to have to do a lot of work. So I'd spend hours on hours each night, you know, just fine tuning that technique and really kind of, you know, just the little things like the details, like we learned in the NFLPA, you, you know, some of the guys that talked is just the details, man. I really, you know, fine tuned those details. And um, I went to a couple camps did all right, you know, at my first two, um, wasn't nothing spectacular, but then my third one, I, um, ended up winning the speed competition. And, um, this was late into the recruiting process. This was in like January of my senior or like after my senior football season. Um, and I remember all the guys, you know, were already committed. And I was like sitting there like, well, maybe I won't, you know, get an offer. And then, um, coach Lunsford hit me up when I was in English class. Um, just was like, Hey, you know, I'm the special teams coordinator from Georgia Southern. He's now our head coach, but I'm um, at the time he's our special teams coordinator. And he's like, um, we're really interested in you. And I remember calling my dad. I was like, do you know who Georgia Southern is? And he goes, no, nah, I don't know. He says, do you know what the conference? And I looked Sunbelt. I'm like, oh, because I remember Nebraska playing Troy and all them back in the days. So I was like, oh, okay. So I do know, you know, what conference they're in, but went on a visit fell in love with the place, loved the coaches, you know, and um, they take a lot of pride in special teams. Um, something I really, you know, admire by coach Lunsford. Um, you know, we've had young way coup and, you know, now Tyler Bass, both in the NFL. So I hope, you know, to carry on that legacy. Um, so. Yeah, George. And, and you know, I, I appreciate your patience because I know you, you answered a lot of these same questions, but you'll probably get asked another dozen times or two dozen times between now and the draft. So, you know, you, you could get your, uh, your version down pat, but it's incredible just your journey, but also like Georgia Southern is suddenly like cranking out all these special team aces, right? Like they're, yeah. becoming, like they're becoming special teams. You uh, literally and Tyler Bass. Um, I mean, he, he was like one of the top, if not the top kickers in the league this year. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, Young Hoo Koo, who I had a chance to get to know him because I had him like four or five years ago down at the College Gridiron Showcase. He was one of our kickers. And so I, I follow, I, you know, I've always kept tabs and talk about perseverance, right? Here, here's someone who could have easily hung up the cleats, right? Mm -hmm. How many times was he picked up, released, picked up, released, unemployed? And he just, he just, kept his head down, kept working, stayed ready. And like, here we are. And that, that caught, that was like four, four years ago, I want to say. And then this year he gets an opportunity of a lifetime. And guess what? He looks like he's going to play another 10 years in the league, the way he was kicking this year. So just yeah. an incredible story, uh, incredible pipeline you guys are building. I don't know if you've spoken to Tyler or, or young who at all lately, but uh, I, I would imagine just by, being around them, watching them, learning from their process that you've been able to take away a lot. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I got, I was fortunate enough to play with Bass for three years and be his snapper um, for field goals and PATs. And I'm um, a couple punts, actually. He did punt a few times in uh, college, but they took that away from him because they didn't want to get him hurt, you know, because they knew his potential. Um, but, you know, Bass was a great leader. Um, he really, you know, taught me you know, what it takes. And, you know, he pushed me to be better and every day. And, you know, he was my roommate as well for three years. So we really got to get on a personal level and um, get to know each other. Um, but yeah, I mean, Koo really started at us for us. Cause I remember when Koo made it, you know, Bass, I think played with Koo for two years. Um, so I, you know, you could see it in Bass's eyes that, you know, he knows what it takes. He saw, you know, what Koo had to do. And so, you know, he was, you know, kind of showing me the same thing, you know, what it takes and, what you have to do to be the best. And, you know, it has been an um, ongoing joke with um, Coach Lunsford and I and the rest of the specialists at Georgia Southern about um, us becoming um, Spec University. So <laughs> I love it. Ryan Langan here, Georgia Southern long snapper here uh, on the state of football. You there bringing you the names you need to know first since 2002. It's what we do at the NFL Draft Bible .com. 
And so, uh, Ryan, you know, just winding down here, uh, what is your kind of uh, plan of attack look like between now and about the next 100 days or so? Will you strictly be down in Orlando training? You have uh, kind of anything on the agenda in terms of showcases? What does the next three months look like for Ryan Langan? Um, you know, I've been, fortunately I've been blessed. I did get it just recently, just get an invite to the senior bowl. So I will be leaving this Saturday, um, to go, um, you know, do that week long thing and, you know, show my skills. So I'm very excited, you know, to get that opportunity, especially with, you know, the stuff going on this year and, you know, the combine getting canceled and, you know, you just don't know with pro days what's going to happen. So, um, just the uncertainty, I'm really, you know, honored to be able to go and showcase my skills there. Um, but other than that, I'll be here in Orlando till about early February. And then after that, it'll just kind of be um, hopping around, doing some camps and showing, you know, some things, uh, my skill sets, but just, you know, maintaining, you know, everything, you know, health wise and just snapping wise, you know, that's really the end goal is just maintaining and staying healthy. So. And congratulations, Ryan. I'm so happy to hear that for you. I did not know that coming in uh, to today's show. I you know, can only keep tabs on so much. But, um, man, that is such a wonderful opportunity for you. And I'm, I'm so glad because, to your point, we don't know if Combine is really going to produce testing or measurables. And so this is now an opportunity for you to showcase your talent in front of the NFL teams. Uh, I know I, I, I spoke to Jim Nagy a couple weeks ago, and I know there was at least 120 scouts confirmed at the time. I'm sure there's more coming down there. Uh, tell me – what you want to leave, you know, what, what's the impression you want to leave upon the NFL scouts when they depart mobile and, and hop on the plane back to their hometown? What's the impression? What's the takeaway that you want them to, to, to leave home with about Ryan Langan? Um, you know, just kind of relaying back to my backstory, you know, I want them to know that um, I'm not going to let anyone tell me no or not. I shouldn't say no specifically, but, you know, I had a lot of doubt going through, you know, um, my hometown, you know, people were like, there's no way he goes D one. There's no way he does that. You know, just a lot of doubt. Um, but I didn't, you know, don't get me wrong. I had a, you know, huge backbone from home, you know, people supporting me, but you know, you always have those things, you know, just a lot of doubt. And so, you know, I just want them to, you know, definitely know where I came from and, you know, how I persevered and that I wasn't going to let anything stop me. I was going to do whatever I could to get, you know, my foot in the door and, um, you know, I'm very adaptable, you know, obviously I went from six man to 11 man, like anything is definitely possible because, you know, so um, just knowing that, you know, I'm highly motivated. I have a blue collar work ethic, you know, from raised on the farm, did a lot of, you know, blue collar work, dirty work. So, you know, I'm willing to do anything, you know, um, so I just want them to know, you know, that I can be the guy and I will be the guy and I'm just blessed, you know, to be in there in that situation. So. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, make, make the most of it. I know you'll do well. We'll be rooting for you. Uh, you definitely have uh, all, all the NFL PA ball and the NFL draft Bible uh, familia behind you. And looking forward to you continu continuing your journey and, and, and you know, uh, carrying on the legacy uh, of uh, uh, special teams. What do you call it? Spec down there? Spec? What do you guys got? you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Ryan, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, We'll touch base at some point here before the draft, but thanks again so much for the time and uh, look forward to uh, seeing and hearing all the good things that you do down in Mobile next week. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.